Hey guys, this is Jeff with Tenacore. Today we're going to talk about rights and laws and rules and being a jackass. Does it matter and does it matter to you? So the first thing is going to be rights. So we live in America. You have a constitutional right to own and carry firearms and we support that and you should too. It is great if Americans own guns. The more guns we own and the more responsible citizens we have who are utilizing guns and doing it in a safe, responsible way, the better off we are as a country and as a polite society. Something that's different from a right is a law. So there's various federal and state and local laws regarding firearms. That is a very different and distinct thing. You should know what the laws are and you should understand the consequences if you don't follow the law. Generally speaking, we would encourage you to follow the law, but if you choose to go against that, then you just need to understand what the consequences are. Something that's different than rights and laws is going to be safe gun handling. A very mature way to understand safe gun handling is going to be the universal firearms handling rules. So the universal firearm handling rules of all guns are always loaded, never point a gun at anything you're not willing to shoot, keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on the target, be sure of your target and what's behind and beyond it are um, long-standing guidelines for the handling of a gun. One of the thing about it is they are universal, so they are for all places, all times, everywhere. They are also specifically for handling a gun. So they're not rules that apply to guns that are stored or guns that are not being handled, guns that are secure in some way. And so that is an important distinction to be a professionally minded user is to understand gun handling rules are for handling guns only and not for other things like the storage of a gun. For example, if I was to take a gun and place it on a table and walk away from it, um, as long as that's in a secure environment, that is not an unsafe thing to do. And now the gun handling rules don't apply to that gun because that gun is not being handled. So if someone walks in front of the muzzle of the inanimate object lying on a table with no one handling it, it is not a unsafe thing. It might be uncomfortable emotionally, but it's not actually an unsafe thing. In a similar way, if you have a holstered gun on your hip and you lie down to shoot prone and someone is walking behind the line, Technically, that holstered gun is pointed at that person if they walk directly behind you. And again, that is not an unsafe thing because the gun is secure and it's not being handled. A fourth thing to consider is range safety rules. So range safety rules are something that are going to be created by the facility or the organization that is hosting the shooting. And they're going to have various rules. Generally. Organizations like the NRA have rules that they recommend ranges use, and those rules are really set in place by insurance companies and lawyers. And they're not for safe gun handling, they're for the safety of the facility. And they're really focused on the lowest common denominator. They might have a rule that says keep the gun on the firing line and pointed down range, and that again is a strange safety rule, it's not a universal gun handling rule. So if you're to break a range safety rule, it is breaking the rule for that given organization or that facility, but it does not necessarily mean you're doing something unsafe. You're just violating the rules that they've set up. As you mature, or as if you're part of a team or an organization that is doing gun stuff all the time, um, you might choose to reduce the number of range safety rules you have. So like say you're on a SWAT team and everyone is trained the same way. There's certain professional standards that are expected of everybody. You might have almost no range safety rules because everyone is just expected to know the universal firearm handling rules and apply them to how they handle a gun. And it doesn't have to be rigid and restricted like it is for most commercial gun ranges. So to have non-conventional range safety where people are potentially forward of a line or you have staggered lines of shooting, you have people drawing guns behind the line that are doing administrative things, that is not inherently unsafe. As long as you are following the universal firearms handling rules, it is safe. A common tactic used in law enforcement and military is going to be a flanking maneuver or like an L-shaped ambush. Generally, that's what's done inside of a room. So you have overlapping fields of fire. When you do that, you are putting people downrange. When you compare that to conventional range rules, the context matters, the situation matters. If you are a team that is training to, do, to deploy tactics like that, you would want to actually do training 
where you are shooting like that. So it's almost a requirement that if you're going to do that at some point in your training and in the maturity of that team or that group or that organization, you would progress to the point where you have people who are forward of the line while other people are shooting. To be professionally minded, you have to understand who you are and what you're ready for in your maturity. And most people who handle guns are probably not qualified to have people downrange or forward of the line while they're shooting. And if you did that, you would want to do that in a very structured, organized, planned way in order to ensure that you do it in a safe way. So politeness is kind of the final point, and some people um, get really upset when we start talking about politeness, but really um, it is the difference between a professionally minded user and someone who's kind of sloppy, right? So you want to be polite with a gun. Like you'd want to communicate to the people around you and ensure that everyone knows what you're doing and why you're doing it, right? So I could be in a group of people, I could draw my gun and I could do it in a safe way, but I could also do it in a rude way. The more polite thing would be to either communicate to everybody what you're going to do or to turn away from the group and do it in a way where it's not uncomfortable. To tie the politeness piece back to the gun handling, uh, if I take that gun and I place it on a table, right, that is not unsafe gun handling because I'm not handling the gun. However, it might be rude to take a loaded gun and leave it on a table where a bunch of people are walking by, right? The issue there is not that it's unsafe from a handling perspective or unsafe from a range safety perspective. The issue is that it's rude. The professionally minded user is going to understand these five categories. Uh, the professionally minded user is going to understand his constitutional rights and believe in them and hold to them. Also understand the, the laws and know um, when are they violating the laws and when are they not. The professionally minded user is going to understand safe gun handling and how gun handling applies and when it doesn't. A professionally minded user is going to understand the context of the range rules for a given group or a given organization and follow those rules. And a professionally minded user is also going to be polite with a gun and know they can follow range rules, they can follow gun handling rules, but to really be the mature, um, confident, polite user, professional user is to understand etiquette around guns and how to handle guns in a way that shows um, skill and competence and inspires other people to be, hopefully be like them and give them something to look up to uh, so that more people will exercise their rights and they'll exercise their rights in a safe and professional way.